Okay, guys, okay, guys, calm down. The Milky Way Core is coming back, but there's plenty more to enjoy in the night sky, so stay tuned. Alright guys, it is March, which is the month of the vernal spring equinox. So on the 20th of March, we will have a day of equal daytime and equal nighttime, pretty much worldwide. And then after that, the daytime becomes longer than the nighttime. Not only that, but if you're living in a country that partakes in daylight savings time, on the 30th of this month, the clocks will go forward an hour. So not only are the nights getting shorter, but darkness is also falling later. But before I jump into today's video guys, I know a few of you out there will be looking to brush up on your astrophotography skills. So it's a good thing that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in a huge range of topics including all genres of photography, all things business such as accounting, freelancing and marketing and there are even a number of courses in astrophotography and astronomy. And they're not messing about either guys, so there's this course on nightscapes run by Ian Norman himself, the guy behind the legendary lonelyspec.com. So Ian will get you guys up to speed on shooting landscape astrophotography and it covers a broad range of topics. It's particularly good for beginners or those who are looking to sort of refresh their skills before Milky Way course season starts again. There's also this course on astronomy for starscapes run by James Manning and this knowledge will massively help you in your planning of astrophotographs. A little bit of knowledge in the wonders of the night sky and how they move will go a long way in your planning so it's well worth checking out. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to all the classes and communities so you can pick the ones that are best for you. It's also super affordable so an annual subscription costs less than $10 a month. For those in the UK, it's about £6.50 a month. However, if you're not sure if it's the right thing for you or you just want a little taster before you dive on in, uh, we've got a little giveaway. So for the first 500 of my subscribers who use the link in the video description, you will get two months free trial of Skillshare. No strings attached, two months. You can try any of the courses you want and then if you like it, you can of course carry on throughout the year. Now, of course, many of you will be familiar with March as the start of Milky Way season, but I'm going to refrain from using that term and I'm going to call it Milky Way core season. I mean, you can see some part of the Milky Way all year round, and I think having this defined Milky Way season puts people off from photographing the Milky Way at other times of the year. And Milky Way season is basically the time of the year, March to September, when you can see the galactic core, the very heart of the Milky Way. Yes, it's the brightest and most interesting part of the Milky Way, but there are still other parts of the Milky Way that get neglected throughout the summer months. So from here on forth, I'm going to call it Milky Way core season, uh, just to try and avoid that confusion and stop misleading people into thinking that you can't see the Milky Way outside of Milky Way season. But the Milky Way core will now be rising in the southeast just before sunrise. So the best time to photograph the Milky Way core will be the onset of astronomical twilight in your local area. So check the time that astronomical twilight starts in your local area and that will roughly be the best time to photograph it because that will be when the Milky Way is at its highest point before the darkness starts turning to daytime. With new moon on the 6th of March, the Milky Way window for this month is from the 1st, from the very start of the month, up until about the 15th, depending on where you are. So there's a nice two weeks there to try and capture the Milky Way rising into the morning skies. You may have noticed that the Milky Way core is accompanied by a few planets this month as well. So, so Jupiter, which is in the constellation of Phucus this month, rises at about 2 a.m., and it's shining at a decent magnitude of minus 2.1. If I fast forward time, the Milky Way starts rising into the southeast, shortly followed by Saturn, which is in the constellation Sagittarius. Saturn shining at plus 0.6. Remember, the more negative the number, the brighter it is. So Saturn is not shining as bright as Jupiter. And if I fast forward time a little bit more, you'll see Venus rising into the twilight then. And Venus is shining at a very bright minus 4.1. But as the month goes by, 
Venus will sink lower and lower on the horizon. By the end of the month, it will be very difficult to see. Um, but if I just rewind time a little bit, you can see that the Milky Way core is accompanied by Jupiter and Saturn this year. Now, on the first, second, and third, these three planets, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus, are accompanied by a nice crescent moon. So the very start of the month, got some very busy morning skies in the southeast. Now, as for the evening skies, just after sunset, if you look in the west, you might be able to find... Oh, there he is. <laughs> You might be able to find Mercury, the most elusive of the naked eye planets. And and at the start of the month, it'll be shining at a magnitude of about 0.1, but it'll become a lot more difficult to spot as the month goes by. So early on in the month, you should be able to spot Mercury in the west. And that leaves Mars to dominate the evening skies and it sets at about 11.30 p.m. and it's the sole planet in the evening skies and what you'll see with Mars as the month goes by towards the end of the month in particular it gets quite close to Pleiades, the open star cluster uh, so maybe there on the 31st that could be quite a nice colourful uh, telephoto frame there so really interesting opportunity for some somewhat deep space astrophotography now with the nights in the northern hemisphere getting shorter we're coming to the end of northern lights season there's also something about the equinoxes that brings about the strongest aurora storm something that scientists quite haven't worked out yet but you typically get really strong geomagnetic storms in march so if you are thinking of a last minute trip maybe go north and get a last glimpse of the aurora before the season closes I've just uploaded two vlogs from my recent trip to Senja in Norway with Adrian Mordwit, so check those out if you haven't already. I'll link them above and in the, in the video description below, but check those out if you haven't already. Maybe you'll be inspired to head north and go and see the Northern Lights. Now last month I mentioned the zodiacal light is even better this month, so if you face west after sunset, you should be able to see a nice triangular diffuse glow of light emanating from the horizon and this is basically dust in the same plane as the planets being lit up by the light of the sun it is a form of light pollution technically a natural form of light pollution but it can add something to your photographs and it's nice that there's this seasonal nature to astrophotography because you can only see it after sunset in spring and before sunrise in the autumn so have a little go see if you guys can catch the zodiacal light this month and do note that it is quite a faint light. It's similar to the Milky Way, so you'll be using the same settings as the Milky Way. And you want to make sure that there's no light pollution to the west of your position as well. And that is about it for this month, guys. On to the hashtag Wittens. Last month, I completely forgot to set you guys a challenge. Um, and there are some really, really amazing photographs in there. There's a lot of amazing photographs of the super moon, the snow moon. Um, and a few from the lunar eclipse as well from January um, but I really liked that a lot of you captured the conjunction between the moon sandwiched between Venus and Jupiter and three of my favorites starting with this one from Phil Verney taken from the heart of London you can see the moon the crescent moon in between those two planets and again, I just love that you can do astrophotography even from the very light polluted heart of London. And sticking to this theme of light polluted astrophotography, uh, it was also captured by Tim Cornbill. And Tim has got a lot of awesome moon and planet conjunction shots this month. So head over to his profile and check his out as well. But I love this image taken from an urban setting uh, in Birmingham, a nice misty morning. And then lastly, I really like this alignment by Picturesque by Samuel Quinn. Um, some really nice planning got into that one, so well done on that one. This month, um, I'm going to set two tasks. So the Zodiacal Light, I wouldn't mind seeing some pictures of the Zodiacal Light, seeing as it's at its best this month. 
Um, but I also want to see how crazy and dedicated you guys are to wake up at 4 a.m. and go and get the Milky Way. And don't try and cheat me because the planets act as a timestamp. I will know that you took it this month because of the placements of Saturn, Jupiter, and Venus. It's quite common that you can tell what year a Milky Way photograph was taken by the planets within the photograph. Uh, this year, Saturn and Jupiter will be there pretty much all season. Uh, but this month especially, you'll be able to get the Milky Way with not only Saturn and Jupiter, but Venus as well. So if, uh, if you guys get out and do that as well, you might get featured in Witten's next month. And that is it guys, thank you for tuning in again and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.